Sandy was certainly not the first storm to ever hit the Northeast, nor was it the most powerful. Going back about 25 years, there was Hurricane Gloria in 85, Hurricane Bob in 91, and even Hurricane Irene, which Scott and I documented in 2011. One thing these storms had in common is that they all approached from the southwest and hugged the coastline as they traveled northeast. Now, if I overlay Sandy's track, you can see it was quite different. Sandy approached the coast at a nearly perpendicular angle from the southeast. This would prove to be a critical factor in the amount of storm surge the area received compared to past storms. So why did Sandy follow this unusual path? Well, it was largely because of a coincidence of several factors. Here's a map of the mid-level steering flow during the days before Sandy's landfall. You can see a prominent dip in the jet stream in the middle of the country. This is called a trough, and this one was digging towards the southeast. Normally, a large trough like this would pick up a small hurricane circulation and take it out to sea. But the timing and strength of this one was such that it undercut Sandy's circulation on the south side and acted to slingshot it back towards the coast. As it did so, its energy combined with Sandy and the system grew rapidly in size and strength. Now, at the surface, this large trough had been driving a powerful cold front south and east across the country. As this front reached the east coast, it stalled out and reoriented itself, providing a track for Sandy to follow right into the northeast. This unusual track proved to be a worst case scenario for the New York, New Jersey coastline. Due to its shape, the coastline in this area acts to funnel wind-driven water into the harbors and lowlands when a storm comes from the southeast, and this was exactly what happened with Sandy. Here's what the predicted storm surge looks like for this worst case scenario. It proved to be fairly accurate in predicting which areas got totally inundated. This map shows the various forecast tracks put out by the National Hurricane Center. The green line shows the final path the storm ended up following. On October 25th, models began to latch on to the scenario of a northeast strike, almost five days before the storm made landfall. This is truly impressive forecast accuracy and no doubt helped many folks get out of harm's way. So we're here at Rockaway Beach, 10 years after Hurricane Sandy made landfall. This is the uh, parking lot, which uh, in the days after the storm was actually a staging area for FEMA. People came here and donated clothes, jackets, because the weather was getting colder at that point, canned goods, whatever they could uh, to help the people of this area that were completely devastated by the storm. So this is the new boardwalk here at Rockaway Beach. Uh, unlike the old boardwalk, which was literally made of boards, they decided to rebuild this one using cement, which was a very good idea. It, it will hold up much better if another storm comes this way, for sure. But as you'll see, the old boardwalk was no match for the storm surge once it came in. It literally, de literally decimated the boardwalk, uh, and it was piled up, what was left of it, all out in that direction there, all the way up to the foot of the Cross Bay Bridge. It was nothing but sand and uh, splintered wood, as far as you could see. Right here where we're standing at Beach 97th Street used to be a set of stairs that went right down to the sand and to the water. And on the day of landfall, the water is already coming up to where I'm standing right now, shooting underneath the boardwalk. And already at that time, was reaching the parking lot, and we were still in North Winds at that time. Uh, so we all kind of knew that uh, at some point we were going to have to get out of there, because when the winds uh, shifted around to the south and southeast, the, the entire ocean was going to come in and destroy the entire boardwalk, and probably a lot of the houses that were, and the buildings that faced the uh, water right here. And uh, they were. They, they sustained very heavy damage. Okay, and uh, so you live here uh, in Rockaway uh, Beach. You're one of the Rockaway residents. Yeah, I live here. I'm on 99th Street. I've been here for a little, about 10 years. Um, and uh, this is the second evacuation in, in two years. Last year we had to leave for Irene, which actually I, I boarded up my house and put sandbags up and I went to stay with uh, my brother in Brooklyn, in Bushwick, and uh, everything was fine last year. Hopefully we'll be as lucky this year. Um, I'm a little more worried about, not so much the winds, but the surge. 
there's a lot of water moving, the high tides and everything. So you're planning on staying for the storm? No, actually I'm not. I'm gonna pack up everything, my dogs, <laughs> you know, board up the house, put sandbags up, pull the feet, just in case. So what are your plans for uh, Sandy? Are you gonna stay? Are you gonna heed the evacuation warnings? What are you gonna do? No, we'll ride it out. We'll ride it out like we ride all of them out, you know? Uh -huh. We've been hearing about evacuating for, uh, since we've been here. That's about 45 years, so. Uh, so you've been through a few of these, quite a few of these storms. Yeah, we've been through a bunch of them, you know. They're actually a lot of fun if you, if you prepare right and you do the right thing and you be safe, you know, it's a lot of fun. Now, how did it work out for Hurricane Irene last year? How'd you guys fare with that? You know, we fared all right. We fared all right. I'm over here on the 10th floor. So uh, it, was, uh, it was actually a pretty spectacular show. God's beauty, the ocean, the boardwalk. It was phenomenal, man. It was, it was beautiful. Well, I appreciate it. Well, stay safe. Yeah, good Take deal. care. And uh, are you, what are your plans for Hurricane Sandy? Are you going to stay? Or are you going to heed the uh, evacuation warnings? What are your plans? We're staying. I have to call up my boss. Um, we are staying. Most of my family, I pretty much think, is staying. We have neighbors that live on the canal right over there. Our family, rather, that lives on the canal. They'll have a little bit of flooding. I hope it doesn't go in their house. I know that some people are stealing sand from the bird sanctuary. We'll be fine. <laughs> On the day of landfall, we decided that our first stop would be in northern Queens County, along the shores of Long Island Sound. We picked a spot on Utopia Parkway, directly next to the Throgs Neck Bridge. When we arrived, the storm surge was already coming over the seawall and into the streets and homes. We never seen it like this over here. Oh yeah, this is bad. Tonight's going to be the good one. Yep. Oh, what are you still doing hey, here? Hey, how are you? Look. I'm waiting. You know, I guess it's... Right at Willard's 
going to get the cross neck bridge in Queens, New York. <laughs> Over the side, yeah, yeah. and then I think a couple it's hours. You think by time. I decided to get up close and personal with my GoPro and gathered a few shots from the seawall itself. Wave after wave was cascading over my head and the worst of the surge was yet to come. The water at this point was steadily rising and was now reaching the homes along Utopia Parkway. It was at this point we all decided to head back to Rockaway Beach along the south shore of Queens to see what was going on there. Okay, we're going down uh, Woodham Boulevard here. It is 3.30 in the afternoon, August, uh, August, October 29th. You would think it's August. It's actually October 29th, 2012. Hurricane Sandy coming ashore. Unbelievable storm. Uh, and a, a historic storm uh, on just about every level. Uh, incredible storm surge in Bayside, New York earlier. Now we're heading south to Broad Channel. Uh, this is very familiar to us because we were doing it last year with Irene, and now here we are back-to-back -back years, back-to-back -back tropical landfalls. Uh, and this one has the potential to be much worse than uh, Irene in uh, 2011, so we'll see what we get. But the worst of the conditions are going to be over the next six hours. We'll see what happens. Upon arriving at Rockaway Beach around 4.15 that afternoon, it was apparent that all of the south and east facing coastlines, including Staten Island and the New Jersey shore, were in big trouble. We were still in offshore winds for the most part at that time, but yet the storm surge was already barreling inland. The beach was literally gone when we arrived, and the surge was already reaching the Beach 94th Street parking lot.
the stairs go up? That's George Karunas from Canada, who was with fellow Canadian storm chaser Mark Robinson and chaser Tim Millar from Florida. Whoa. Something just came apart. Yeah, sign. We all decided to bail a bit further north as it was getting a little dicey at Rockaway Beach and we didn't want our only road out of there blocked by storm surge. So we repositioned to the southern portion of Howard Beach, Queens, right as the storm surge was now beginning to overtake Cross Bay Boulevard as well. Is the scene on Cross Bay Boulevard in Howard Beach, about five miles from my house. There's about five feet of water in parts of the street right here. Woo. Hurricane Sandy coming ashore. And uh, we got through this just in time. Uh, we were just a little bit down the road and we saw the water rising, so we got out of here quick. And uh, we, we drove just through here and then a little bit down the road there on dry land, and it's good that we did that because we wouldn't be driving through this now.
October 29th, 2012, Hurricane Sandy, New York City. Uh, got a lot of water coming from the canal across Cross Bay Boulevard into Howard Beach, Queens. Uh, and uh, some big time storm surge flooding going on. Sandy is uh, coming ashore right now. Uh, uh, just south of us in New Jersey and uh, it's pretty much the worst possible hit New York City can take. Uh, the, the way this storm came in is just unbelievable. What none of us realized as we packed up and prepared to head back to my place in central Queens was that the worst was yet to come. One of the most devastating outcomes of Hurricane Sandy was a massive fire that destroyed over 120 homes just to the south of where we were in the town of Breezy Point, Queens. Officials have determined that the blaze was sparked when seawater inundating the neighborhood made contact with electrical wires at one home on Ocean Avenue. The fire, which began around 8.30 that night, quickly spread throughout the entire neighborhood as strong southeast winds fanned the flames to the adjacent homes. Firefighters did their best, but were slowed down by several feet of storm surge that at the time was still rising throughout the community at the height of the storm. Due to the depth of the storm surge, they were unable to reach many of the homes in time. You will see in the next segment that this fire left behind a sea of charred buildings, furniture, personal belongings, and memories. Some 21 fires destroyed more than 200 homes and businesses across the city that night. Can we just run a hose through it probably and just try and get it out? What's that? Hey, so you want to get siphon hoses line. and just try and siphon yeah. it out somehow? Siphon the pump? You can't siphon, that's a yeah. ground level. Yeah, I'm saying, can we get a pump if we have a pump or something? If I'm, I'm going to try to... This was all filled, I mean, we got gas things, we got logs, we don't know where the hell this stuff came from. We got tubes, sleds. You can even see where the water line uh, yeah. right, right there. there? Right here. Straight up there in my waist. Yes. I'm six yeah. foot. Well, if they find out that the pipes are broken somewhere else and they're contaminated, yeah. they will. Yeah. They will, they're going to shut up everything. And this is uh, Vinny's place here in Broad Channel. Obviously, this is uh, damage caused by uh, Hurricane Sandy. Now, where, where were you exactly when all this was taking place? Uh, I was place? across the street on the second floor of a neighbor's house. Okay, and uh, so you did decide to stay. And when, when did you realize that this was not, you know, that this was turning into the worst case scenario? Uh, way too late. <laughs> yeah. uh, the water was already up three or four feet by the time. Oh, boy. I'm seeing what you've what you've seen of this. If if you got an evacuation order again, do you think you'd go? You think yeah, you'd... we'd be gone. After seeing this. Definitely. Yeah. I've been here 44 years, and this is, this is the first time I even thought about it. Actually, this time around, I wasn't even thinking about leaving because the way those storms normally come up the right. coast, they normally go out to sea. But this time, it just they said it was going to make a left-hand turn into the coast, and it did. It did. And I didn't believe them. I gotta go clean so up you had a very lovely house, and you still have to do it. This one, look at this dock right here. They said it took it out to sea because it pulled back. These are those blocks that we saw floating by.
definitely. It's so narrow. The wind was blowing from the east, so it would have you know, funneled any boat. On the TV. Returning to Rockaway Beach a few days after the storm was very surreal. The only thing that was left of the boardwalk were the concrete pillars. As far as you could see, it was just a sea of splintered wood and sand. The boardwalk and the residential homes right at the coast were no match for Sandy's storm surge. On November 9th, 11 days after Sandy made landfall, we were escorted into the community of Breezy Point by the military to document the aftermath of the fire. 
Seeing the total and complete destruction of all of those homes and businesses with our own eyes was an incredibly humbling experience. We met several residents there that day, and what struck us immediately was how so many of them kept a positive outlook, even though some of them lost everything. In the coming weeks and months, it was determined that Hurricane Sandy was responsible for 147 deaths throughout the Atlantic Basin, with 72 of those fatalities in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast alone. Damage estimates topped 70 billion, making Sandy one of the costliest storms in U.S. history. It would take many years for communities around New York City and New Jersey to recover, and many people had to wade through bureaucratic red tape to have their homes rebuilt. In the end, as rare as Sandy's track was, if it happened once, it could happen again. Hopefully, if that day comes, we won't have a repeat of the devastation of 10 years ago. Thank you for watching.